Hi, my name's Steve Seddon. Uh, in this video, I want to have a bit of a look at how flipped learnings evolve for me. Um, and more specifically, I want to look at how it's now including inquiry and questioning. Um, I call this the three flavors of flip. So let's have a look. The strategy that's really helped me deliver student-centered and personalized learning is flipped learning. So as a starting point today, uh, I really want to just consider this from the point of view of what is it that we are actually flipping? Right, the photo, photo here was, was drawn over 100 years ago and it shows a, a vision of what they thought learning might be like in today's world. Um, that we'd have technology that could uh, really just facilitate the information straight to the students. Um, that delivery of content. And I'd like to think that uh, our vision of flipped learning is well beyond that. That it's a lot more than just the, the lecture at home. Um, and that's how flip learning is often perceived, that we can get more out of our students by being able to deliver lectures at home. For those of us who really embrace flipped learning, we know that it's a lot more than that. Many people describe flipped learning as the effective use of class time, ensuring you're doing the right things at the right time, and strategic use of direct instruction. So rather than just coming into class and answering the questions, coming in and having a very active classroom full of student-centered activities. What we're looking at here in this diagram is is the representation of Bloom's taxonomy, and I'm I'm sure um, most educators have uh, come across this in in one form or another. Um, and I think this is an interesting way to describe one aspect of um, of what flipped learning is all about. And I saw this originally presented in a video by Ramsey Masalam. So what we see is a low order thinking, I remember and understand down one end, and a high order thinking, analysing, evaluating, and creating up the other end of Bloom's taxonomy. We can describe that as the cognitive load increasing. They require a bit more grunt from the brain as you, as you move up. And in our classroom, we need to think about when is it that it would suit to be individual and when would it suit the group environment. And the activities at the top here, the whole order thinking, they might be considered to be the ones that really suit the group environment. The support from the teacher, support from their peers. So those are the sorts of things that we tend to want to do in the classroom. The individual things, the remember and understand, the low order thinking, the listening to lectures, um, that can be done in the individual space. In, in many, many flipped learning environments, we draw a line through there. And we say that's a homework line. Below the line, let's do that in individual space. Above the line, let's concentrate that in the group space. And I think that's still an interesting framework. However, in many classrooms, there's a bit of a blurring of that homework line. The tasks that we do tend to flow in and out of the classroom. The students have one-to-one -one technology. We start things, they continue at home, and they come back with the same things. The other things that happen is what we're able to do in this group space. Um, the tools that we can use allow us to collaborate quite effectively in a blended environment online. We don't necessarily all have, always have to be in the physical environment. Not to say that that's not important but it allows us some flexibility to do it in both environments. So in my classroom, I'd say I'd see a definite evolution of flipped learning. We started off and it was really just, can I deliver some more content and some homework? Can I utilize these videos? Can I create my own? And then a shift as my classroom became more student-centered and I really concentrated on the high order thinking activities in class. More recently though, I've been able to think about questions and collaboration and moving those things to the virtual space. And not just being a flip meaning I'm using videos, but flip meaning what am I flipping to the virtual space. So let's look at questions in our classroom. In a very traditional classroom, it's the, ooh, 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 my hands up, my hands up, I have a question. They might be the only people that get their questions answered. If you're a, a great teacher, you might choose specific students and rotate that around but you're still only really isolating it to the, the people one person at a time and getting one opinion. And other people's opinions are instantly influenced by the people around them. And we'd like to think, is it possible to move beyond that where more students have a voice and we can have more accountability and more authentic opinion, more feedback and more discussion? Looking at every student offering an idea, maybe even multiple ideas, being able to say that they like other people's ideas and give feedback and say that was helpful, make suggestions about what they could think about, creating questions that need to be answered. 
these are all the skills we want to build in students to create, not just create students who are, are good at answering questions, but are good at asking questions and collaborating around those questions. These are the skills that we should be asking of our students and developing in our students for the world they're about to go into. Having confident opinions, being able to analyze things, feedback to one another, being able to critically assess and create their own questions is very important. As a teacher, there's lots of th flavors and lots of things that, are, that I value in my pedagogy and my teaching. But when we recently reflected on our pedagogy, we realized that we were really lacking some inquiry. And that's so important. That's the basis of what we do, understanding the wor net world around us and explaining it. I, th I think the best way to describe the inquiry we're after was creating student interest in a concept, having structured inquiry, provocations to do that. In some cases, this would lead to inquiry units or student-led investigations, but we want it to be a regular part of what we do as we explore each concept, including some provocation and inquiry. The positioning of these questions and provocations is really important. And for us, I think explaining it best in the explore, explain, apply model. For us, delivering a lot of it during the explore phase. It's, it's essential that we have that provocation during the explore phase. We then can go in a phase where the students can t undertake activities that help explain the concepts that we're doing, but only after we've explored it. Only after we've connected to previous learning and exposed misconceptions do we deliver the explanations. The provocations and questions can also happen in the application phase later in, after they have that understanding, applying it to different situations, building more connections with what they, they now understand. And this model has been used well by uh, Ramsey Masalam, uh, who uses Explore Flip Apply model, um, where he a lot of his explanations are, are flipped. Now we know in the blended learning environment that knowledge is accessible. Most, most simple questions, easy to find the answer. It's as simple as typing it into Google. What we're interested in is, is really utilizing some high order questions. Some of the questions that are asking the students to analyze, evaluate, and create, essentially they're the ungoogleable questions. And for I explain these as thinking questions that require a thinking answer, okay? The real chin scratches. So the way I see this sitting in my classroom is I, I call it the three flavors of flip. Okay, three different flavors. And I think any classroom is like baking a cake. And it's really important to consider what ingredients we put in. And if we're really good at baking cakes, we might even design it so it has a specific flavor. We want to get it just right for our students. And how flip learning sits with me now is that I have this repository it's all the videos that I've created that explain the concepts. They're sitting on our website, sitting there for the students to use when and if they need them. They're the ones they can watch in the, as many times as they like. They can pause them when they like. They can watch them at home. They can use them at school. It's like the filing cabinet. The next flavor I have is the responsive videos. And in my student-centered class, it's where we're constantly doing activities, it's important for me to be on my toes and to respond to the students' needs. If there's a question that quite a few people are having problems with, putting a suggestion or a solution, maybe on video with a diagram. If there's a concept that a lot of people can, that are having misconceptions about, or having some trouble understanding, creating a quick sketch, and I'm using explain everything on my iPad, and again, putting it straight to the space. The benefit is that it's accessible. If anyone needs a help, it's online, it's there, ready to go. It helps with the fact that I don't always have time to get to every student. And I certainly don't have time to go home and help them at home. The next flavour, which I think is quite exciting, is the questions and the questioning. This positioning of inquiry. This looking, can we flip these questions to the blended learning environment? So they can extend it at home so that we're using high order thinking in and out of the classroom. It's not to say we don't value our time together in, in, in that group environment, but can we enhance that? Can we enhance the learning? Can it be deeper learning because this high order thinking is extending beyond just the classroom? It flows in and out. 
So essentially what I'm looking at here is as part of the flipped learning model, are we able to create opportunities for deeper learning by moving structured inquiry to the virtual space? And I'd love to hear people's thoughts on what they think about flipping questions and inquiry to the virtual space. Thanks.